If you need inspiration for underwater viewing in Planet Zoo, this is the video for you. Today we're going to look at five different tips and tricks how to do proper underwater viewing with each of them having their own benefits for your guests. But before we do so, we are actually going to look at some real life zoo concepts to understand the basic idea of these concepts a bit better. So let's do that. All right, we're starting with a couple of concept arts and uh, they are very helpful when it comes to the overall design, which will be represented in the five examples we're going to have a look at in a bit. So stick with me, let's go through these um, concepts and uh, also there are some very good architectural insights here I'm going to go through. So the first thing is very easy. It is a pretty standard um, kind of tank in the middle while you have some little, you know, bay area, some rocks to climb on from the sea alliance and uh, also some caves in which you can swim and you you have another underground view. You can't see that so well in this one, but there's like an underground view over here. You've got the show area here on the right hand side, and you've got a very clever design going on over here. So even though the pool is pretty much flat with the ground, so it's actually the ground level, that's very really good. So you can see the animals also on top of the rocks and you don't have to look up high. You still have a good view underground with this um, angled area in front of here. So it has two advantages to do it that way. So the first one is you open up the space and you make the whole pool seem deeper than it actually is because you just kind of make the people watch down. But the second thing is you obviously get a bit of distance in between and grant the animals some privacy without people knocking on the glass directly. So that's very helpful. Um, so this is a very good open spacious design over here. Very American, um, very good, very big, so to say. Um, and you can take a lot of inspiration from that for some more simple realizations. Going into a bit of a different concept, we go into this one. Um, this one is in specific very interesting because it actually gives you uh, two different viewing experiences. So obviously you've got the acrylic uh, tunnel. Uh, I mean, the tunnel is very obvious. You can do a tunnel in Planet Zoo. I'm going to show you one um, and I'm going to link the trick to it. So wait for that in a couple of minutes. Um, but the second thing is very more uh, interesting. With the way how this is all sculpted over here, you make the whole thing look a lot more shallow than it actually is with all the rocks over here. But you have some deeper water here. You've got some deeper water in the front um, and you do also have the chance to see the animals diving while it's deeper than you think because the people are, um, you know, put a little bit higher, to not flat to the ground, so that also gives you a bit of a different feeling. And if you take that whole um, concept to an even more extreme, you can have different uh, elevated positions. So the tunnel viewpoint is something that we do the most because that's like very flat to the side. You can put a barrier in here and you've got the people watching directly into it. But then you have also people watching over the retaining wall and it almost uh, looks like as if you are eye level with them. Uh, so that's also a very good tip to, you know, integrate the whole uh, system into one building. Um, going further, this is another very cool thing. This is something we've done in Yosemite. Valley, if you remember, um, this is a higher viewpoint, so to really have a good view over the entire biosphere, so to say, the entire habitat, and then you've got a lowered area in which people can have the underground view. Pretty simple, but very effective design. Speaking of def effective design, you can also integrate many habitats in one area. So this is the Sequoia Park Zoo. Um, this is really cool because um, you can see how they integrated three different species in actually one element, one viewing opportunity. You've got the bald eagle aviary going over the top of the underwater viewing. So you're basically in the aviary while you still have the view to the otters, which is on um, a medium level. So you can see the adult can actually watch uh, above the waterline while the you know kids still look into the water. Again, with this little dripple down here, or like the, the angled way how the um, uh, how, how it's kind of angled towards the ground. It makes the whole thing uh, appear more shallow than it actually is to get a good viewing experience with the background being uh, slightly angled so that your views are... Um navigated into a certain direction. And on the other hand side, you've got the salmon tanks. And as you can tell, these are intentionally designed a little bit higher than the other side. So the water line is a little higher to make the tank more deep, to make it appear as a full water volume in which you can look into. And then you've got the salmon line from above on the other side, as you can tell over here, this is where it goes. 
looking at this last concept, there is something also special in here. It's the most complicated of all of these concepts, but uh, hear me out. It's a very good idea how to build also water viewings and underwater viewings at the same point. Now, as you can tell from the above view, that's the way more easy view. You can see this round thing is an entire tank and you've got the viewing platform here in the center where you can see the people standing above and you can have the uh, around view and see what's going on. But within that rock area, you can also place an underground view, which is like kind of angled in here. So you have the full experience from underground. This is also how you can play with an area and to make it actually a, a very, not crammed, but a very compact design in a way. Um, so that's very interesting. But now let's look at the five examples. I'm gonna show first one we are going to talk about is the very classic underground view. This one is very specific because we also have an above ground view we are going to have a look at in a second. But you can tell this is a very classic one where we have like a huge barrier going around and the animals diving in their dedicated tanks. Now, they are quite deep. We are at the ground level to make it even appear higher than it really is because you have to just uh you guess where the water line is. Um, we've got something to dive down, so it also gets this feeling of depth as well. We've got the penguins on this side, and we've got the sea lions on the uh, the seals on the other side. Unfortunately, they don't really do diving that much in this uh, specific build uh, because it's relatively old and there are a couple of things broken. But this shouldn't take away anything from the design per se. We are talking about the design. This is why we are taking this into account because that is uh, still one of the coolest designs. I think you are very much sheltered in here under the rock so you have the feeling of being really underwater um, a very good trick is also work with lighting and stuff this looks very scary over here by the way floating like uh, being lifted on <laughs> in the devil's act I don't know um, but yeah this is really a very good design once you're starting and you want to have this very nice underground feel um, having the curved section also helps to um, you know make two habitats next to each other and now it's time to jump above and have a look how it looks from above oh look at that there is actually a penguin coming down here diving for a little round yeah it looks really cool um, you can also have different uh, viewing points from here for example also very neat but let's go on how it looks from above so that is the exact same space from above and it's very hard to to tell because it really feels almost like as if it's, this is meant to be only this viewing opportunity from over here but it isn't apparently it looks very cool because you have <clears throat> almost eye level with the animals when you're standing over here you can you're slightly looking down we've got the penguin slide over here and they can do the diving what you can't really look to uh, watch too closely from over here because it's focused on the land area and the same goes for the seals who have this little harbor appear um, from over here but once they dip into the water you can see them from below so you've got two actual viewing points for this very you know standard design but I still think it's one of the most effective ones uh, to sell to sell the diving the best way possible. One even more effective design when it comes to selling the diving is an underwater tunnel. As you can tell over here with this little otter just doing some tricks above us and people now going through this wonderful tunnel, this is obviously one of the most effective ones. You have to get a bit more creative to build a tunnel, but there are several tunnel tutorials out there. You don't need any mods, that's just said. It's fully vanilla, you can build a tunnel yourself. I'm gonna link this to the top right now and also to the description down below. Um, make Make sure to watch all of the tips first and then go and learn how to build tunnels. They are very effective but the building is a little bit tricky and you have to plan it wisely. But um, yeah, I think there's no denial about the fact that a tunnel is one of the greatest way to present underwater viewing. You feel fully emerged in uh, the underwater area in the world below the waterline. It's really cool. I love it to bits and I really do hope that we will get this natively at some point because um, yeah, it's just quite tricky to build. Number three is a very much hybrid viewing and this one over here is specifically interesting because it grants you two different elements in one. You've got a staircase from the highest point. I'm just going to go all the way up where you are basically on the ground level of where the penguins in this case live. You can see them and once you go down the stairs you are emerged uh, ever so slightly even more with the underwater viewing. So you can stand from over here, see them do their little diving from this peak. You can see them go to the ground, do their tricks and whatnot. And once you go further down, each step you take down, you are even more you know, brought down into their area. And once you go all the way to this wonderful little shade area down here, by the way, shade also helps in real life to have a better view um, because otherwise the sun is, um, you know, making too many reflections on 
the um, on the waterfront here. So basically, this is what you want to do. Make sure that the windows and the glass is kept away from direct sunlight. In fact, actually, even in the game, you can see it has a little effect and um, you can tell that it's easier to see these animals do their little tricks down here in the water. I'm very happy that by now these animals don't require four meter of depth anymore. <laughs> when I built this thing, uh, it was still a requirement for four meters, which was just ridiculous. Um, so they now have a humongous tank in relation to their body size. But this is very much what you need to do. I am still a huge fan of this way of designing underground views. It always is a cool full concept and once we go all the way back again to just show you how this all is in its full glory, you can tell that this makes a lot of sense because you've got two layers of the habitat connected with each other and the people can go up and down and just enjoy it. As this is just one example, um, realistically this would be tied in even better into a zoo and you would have another staircase go up this way so you have even better views and once you're standing up here, this is actually the idea about all of that, you have a wonderful view from above, you can see this little area where they can uh, have a good, you know, uh, chill and stuff. I think it's a very effective design. Um, it's basically the bigger brother of the full underground view because you basically just take away um, the roofing on top of this viewing gallery and add a staircase to connect both of them. Um, so yeah, very big fan of that. I hope you find this inspirational as well. But now let's go up to the next one. Number four is my personal favorite. This is the semi-underground view with a little ditch or a little angled retaining wall in front of it. I'm going to have a couple of variants of this in this specific part for you, but here is why this is one of my favorite designs. So it is mostly used for these kind of um, stage areas, for, you know, viewing areas. It's not fully done here, by the way, but um, you can see where this is going. The good thing about this is from each different seating point, you have a different experience, which is kind of cool. The closer you get to it, you're almost fully emerged as you can tell but if you go a little bit higher up you can tell that you can see a lot more of the habitat and so you get an even better experience it is just one area that brings both experience at the same time as you have seen um, in the other ones where you had to build up and down areas or like uh, above ground and below ground areas this one delivers both experiences in one and I'm a huge fan of this one simply because you have so many different ways of doing it so this one over here is what I have done for a realistic seal habitat. Um, I'm, a, I'm a big fan of this because, uh, it's a sea lion by the way, um, I'm, a, I'm a big fan of this one because uh, we can have many many different views, you've got an education over here and you can see all the way into the habitat of them. Making it so long also gives you a feeling of a very deep water volume for them. So I think it's a super cool way of doing underground views, especially in Planet Zoo because it's relatively simple to achieve but it's very powerful in order to give a good view. But now let's look at the second variant of it. So the otter variant, <laughs> I'm sorry, that was too obvious. The other variant of it is a um, another little trick I used to use for this otter habitat. As you know, in this game, the depth requirement of the animals is relatively high. So even these smaller animals need two meters of water depth at least. Um, but truth to be told, you mostly need 2.1, 2.2 meters, including all the, you know, different decoration you want to do to make them dive. And as you can tell over here, a little trick I used, make this appear as if this is super shallow but the higher you get you will see that you have a little view inside of their area but the way I created this little platform was that from both sides you are entering this area you are going up a little and the same goes for the other side and then I brought in some um, plants and stuff to the side to level this um, because in that way <clears throat> you're creating the feeling as if, as if this is really shallow and you still have this semi underground view I think this is one of my favorite ones for the smaller and tiny animals because you get this wonderful view inside of the deep dive area but no matter where you stand you can see them diving you get the experience see that is just perfect over here um, again I'm a huge fan of this technique I think it's very powerful to sell the idea of a good habitat um, I'm, a, I'm a very very big fan of it and uh, I hope you get some inspiration from that you can do a lot of cool things with it you can play around with the incline that you use um, and this way you make the whole habitat also appear not so big and so dramatically deep uh, it makes the whole thing feel a lot more organic a lot more small and still grants the animals quite a significant space to dive as I've done over here with the small clawed Asian otter which is really really damn cool I'm a I'm a huge fan still of this habitat really really li like it 
We also did do a concept art for this one beforehand, so that always helps as well. If you want to get inspired by that, do this, Google some of the images or do one yourself always helps a bunch. But now let's go to the last one. The last one in our list, number five, is the 360 view. Well, in fact, this one over here is not entirely 360, but you can do it. So the idea is that you have a aquarium or like a tank that goes all the way around you and you've got a staircase in the middle that brings you down. In my specific case over here, it is not entirely around. Many reasons for that, but um, I think you can get the idea. You can technically go and just bring this the entire way around and then you've got the full immersion of being in inside of the habitat specifically over here with the king penguin you can see how cool that is having them dive all the way around you once you plan them you also have to make sure that you give the animals things on both sides of the habitat to make sure that they dive all the way around but um, for me personally this is one of the coolest ways to uh, make an underground way when it comes to giving the guests the perfect view I said that my favorite one is obviously the semi um, viewing gallery but also this full experience can be super cool when you want to give also families a chance to see everything uh, down below and obviously if you want to go all the way and make a full design on the ground because one thing you need to keep in mind once you do that you have to ensure that everything is fully detailed and nicely laid out underground you have to make sure that you have interesting um, air elements in the water to make them go of above and beyond to make sure that they're not just simply swimming around in a circle but then can actually go different routes and this is what I did over here with the aquatic rocks so you get this wonderful cool way of them swimming around these rocks and uh, doing some parkour maneuvers here and there it's a really big fan of that um, I'm also very happy with how it works by now Frontier has really really improved the diving over the course of the time this one is something I've built very early in as well so yeah um, that's that. I really hope you guys enjoyed this. Let's quickly sum up everything for you. And then, um, yeah, we are having another good tips and tricks video for you guys sorted. But now let's draw a little conclusion. That's it. All right, I hope you found these helpful. As I said, make sure to be brave, test different uh, designs to see what works best for your zoo. And if you found this helpful in general, make sure to subscribe to the channel if you haven't already. Thank you so, so much for your ongoing support. I really hope you liked this video. I'm going to see you in the next one. Until then, have a good time and goodbye. Thank you.